Hi guys, welcome to Chaz's No Bullshit Reptile Advice. Uh, this is episode 27. Uh, today we're answering the first of three questions by a new post to a page called Victor Klein. Uh, I hope I'm posting this question in the appropriate place. No, but don't worry about it, I found it. Uh, question one. I understand that a big factor in the beginner, intermediate, advanced is the levels of maintenance, climate, enclosure, hardiness. I've been in Terps my entire life, mostly experienced in dart frogs. I breed them and work with them at the National Aquarium, Baltimore. It's very impressive, Victor. I have a climate husbandry skills, but no experience with snakes the factor that makes me a beginner is that i don't know their the snake's behavior and haven't been exposed to them enough to shake the slight anxiety of their behavior or defensiveness to which end which snakes are typically the best behaved i know each specimen has its own personality uh, but are their species that handle handling well are less anxious or defensive bonus if it's a rat snake or something less conking milk royal python okay so what you're saying is perfectly reasonable although you're working with an incredibly sensitive group of amphibians where environmental control is an absolute paramount consideration which therefore means that you're keeping what we would probably consider to be some of the more advanced level amphibians that do not handle cock-ups very well which means that the level of control and environmental control you've got is fabulous which means that realistically there aren't many snakes that you're not going to be able to turn your hand to when it comes to husbandry because if we're talking about temperatures well they're just parameters that we change on a thermostat static control unit humidity you've got down because you've got your um, your frogs and you're used to being able to maintain them so realistically I don't see you having a huge amount of issues um, when it comes to the anxiety of keeping snakes any snake dealer shop or anything worth their salt is going to really um, drill down on what makes an excellent pet snake and some of the variables you've mentioned yes are important such as um, the, the, the temperament or territoriality, temperature range, humidity requirements, uh, ease of feeding, ease of breeding, rate of growth, hardiness, they all sort of bond together and make this sort of network. Now we've got hum um, the humidity really isn't going to be a huge issue because most of the beginner species we tend to be we're operating outside the tropics as I've discussed previously in other videos everything within the tropics is just a little bit more delicate as you're well aware of with the species that you currently tend to at the uh, Baltimore Aquarium whereas the things that we want to keep as our first snakes that are bomb proof and hardy are going to be the stuff that gets really quite extreme winters which means that their active temperature range from say 31 32 right down to sort of six seven degrees celsius now they're not going to be thriving at these temperatures but they're still alive which means that we can cock up royally and generally still bring them back to full health which is what demarks a hardy snake so um, we're going to be considering things like you've mentioned corn king milk royal python rat snake bull pine gopher house snake uh, western hognose all these sorts of things the things that we've basically done all the way through our introducing series each of these snakes generally the hardiness is there the temperament is give or take and you quite rightly identify that personality makes up a huge proportion of the considerations so kind of like mr olivander um, matching the one to the wizard any shop dealer breeder anybody in a professional capacity of vending snakes will try to match a snake to an owner and even throughout a litter we can get quite a range of personalities shine through and it's at that point that we have to start and pay, pay that, bear that stuff in, in, in mind. We have got, in, for example, in the shop now, we've got um, a few king snakes. We've got a Californian king snake who loves fingers, thinks they're the tastiest thing ever. And then we've got an adult proven Brooks king snake that is an absolute teddy bear and will let anybody hold him and has got all the patience in the world. But king snakes to that end are a bit variable so it is definitely down to the individual snake the scores that we've come up with when we've done our we did a flip chart on facebook which was for about 82 species of snake and it was scored out of 10 and i think it had five or six variables which were temperament territoriality ease of feeding hardiness ease of breeding uh, a 1 is difficult a 10 is great so the closer we get to an average of 10 the best really um, I think the highest scoring snake in the in in the whole flip chart was corn snakes at 9.3 or 9.4 um, as as the median you know once we took took the average of all the scores um, but I understand that not everybody's into them um, you keep 
the heart frogs, some of the most singularly stunning animals on the planet. So, yeah, it would be almost a disservice to you after keeping that to then limit you to a corn snake willingly. I still want it to be a beginner snake. I still don't want you to feel anxious because you've been quite quite honest and quite open and there is a lot of arrogance in this hobby about, you know, admitting whether stuff makes you anxious or makes you nervous. What I would say to you is that um, they're just as anxious of you. They're just as scared of you. Um, keep in mind that it's fear, not necessarily aggression, that's driving their behaviours. Uh, and once they get used to you, you probably find that they will calm down reasonably well. Um... Also, snake bites are nothing. People make such a fuss about it, and we've all watched these programs and documentaries where we're looking at mambas, crates, cobras, all the rest of it. But in actual fact, snake bites, particularly on the colubrids that we'd be recommending as beginner snakes, we're talking pinpricks, if that. Hardly any blood, nothing. And then within an hour, you can barely even see that a bite's taken place. Um, so, you know, I really wouldn't uh, obsess necessarily about that. And plus, there are ways and means when it comes to handling uh, techniques, whether you wanted to hook a snake out of a viv before you picked it up, whether you wanted to tap train it, there's all sorts of ways, particularly if you're trying to deal with anxiety. It'd be rank arrogance of me to just, oh, just go in and get it out, I'll stop being such a big girl's blouse, but that's not that's not the way that it needs to be. I'm very sort of gruff with it, I'm not bothered if they bite, they bite, but what I'm saying to you is as somebody who might be slightly more nervous around them, I understand and I don't want that to necessarily get, tra have a bit of transference onto the snake if that makes sense, so yeah, you know, you can use whatever tools you deem necessary to make you more comfortable when it comes to the handling of snakes. That said, there are some fantastic species that are so laid back and so calm. My initial instincts, even though you sort of said, you know, you weren't bothered so much about the king milks or royal pythons, there are certain kings that are absolutely killer-looking snakes um, that aren't going to overly challenge you. I would definitely be looking at some of the tricolor kings. So, uh, Lampropeltis on t Alterna, the grey-banded king, Lampropeltis uh, Mexicana Theri, I think they've called it Leonis now, they've changed them. But it, I'm old school, I can only remember the others. Greer Eye, which is the Durango King, and uh, the San Luis Potosi, which is Mex Mex, uh, Mexicana, Mexicana, superb snakes. Then there's the Pyro Milanas, which are the Arizona, um, Chihuahua, and Hua Chua 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 Mountain Kings, uh, which are Lampropeltis, Pyro Milana, Pyro Milana, Pyro Milana, Noblochi, and Pyro Milana, Wadini, superb snakes. Everyone that I've just mentioned then, an absolute, absolute maximum of four feet with an average being between two and a half and three and a half feet. Superb snakes. They feed well. They're lovely and calm. There's even some color phase bits knocking about now. Some real choice localities. Definitely something that's having an up spike in interest at the minute, which is fabulous. Another species I would consider personal favourite of the Getulus, that is the Speckled King, which is Holbrookie. And if you get a really good example, they're pretty hard to beat. I mean, we're talking basically a king snake that looks like a diamond python. It, they're just insane. Jet velvet black with bright lemon yellow dots in every scale. These snakes are off the chain pretty. If you're definitely set on a rat snake and you wanted to stick to a rat snake that was both hardy, tame, wasn't going to try your patience, that was going to be calm enough to work around with you, then my first instinct, gut instinct, is to say the Steppe's rat snake, a Laffy Dione, or also known as Dione's rat snake. That would definitely be a good start. There's different localities there. There are different colour varieties and stripe or blotched varieties for you as well. They're incredibly tame, uh, very hardy countries of origin being China and <coughs> all across uh, that, that Eastern Asia and in, into, into sort of Russia, really bomb proof, really hardy. Um, they, they, they have hellish winters, which means that they're all the more stronger for us. Another snake over that neck of the woods that I would recommend would be a Russian rat snake, which is a Laffy Shrineki, which is fabulous. There is also the Amor rat snake, its cousin, it used to be called Shrineki Anamala, now it's just called a Laffy Anamala. A Laffy Anamala is pretty, but it's not as pretty as a Russian. Russians are small. They're black and yellow barred, really nice, but they're highly variable, and you might see what you consider to be a classic Russian named as an, an Anamala, and you may see Anamalas 
was named the Shrenekis. It's, it's, it's a weird one. I've never been quite able to pinpoint that down. And even looking in the Schultz Alafe book, the photos don't really help either because what I would consider to be a Shreneki, which is the yellow and black bands, relatively even, they've got down in it on occasion as Anamala. And then what I consider to be Anamala, which are greys, tans and yellows, and that's down as a Shreneki. So it's like, oh, for God's sake, whatever. You know, I can't work out what you're on about. Another personal favourite over that neck of the woods from the rat snake family, which is hardy, tame, feeds great, available in a couple of colours. The best of which, in my mind, is the Kunishia Island form, is the Japanese rat snake, Alafe climacophora. Um, there is a naturally occurring albino variant, which uh, is in some forest or village or something up in the north of Japan. Um, just, just amazing snakes slightly bigger probably about five feet in length chunky with a nice big head but the Kunishir islands go a lovely sort of blue green really really attractive snakes they're steady they're settled they feed well uh, obviously being over in america i don't know how easy that they're going to be for you to get hold of i always thought that america had access to everything and then from speaking to people we had jake come over from uh, grand cayman and he was saying about the american stuff they're struggling like hell for stuff at the minute and i don't get it because half of this shit that we want to keep is from where you live and then with the Lacey Act and the protection stuff and all the rest of it even you guys can't go out and collect uh, bull snakes or black rat snakes or whatever that used to be common that everybody used to just keep as, as pets out their back garden it's crazy absolutely crazy so Japanese rat snake Dione's rat snake Russian rat snake boom there are three incredible snakes very very tame very very easy to keep and very very hardy um but you need to maybe you know go and see a breeder go and see a shop maybe experience handling a few snakes get their take on it first hand everybody's going to have their own take on it unfortunately i am extremely biased towards rat snakes in general because they're one of my favorite groups of colubrids so whilst i do like the kings if you gave me a king or you gave me a rat i'd keep a rat every day wouldn't I just would. I, um, as pretty as I find some of those little kings, I'd, a really good Kunishir Island Japanese rat snake is awesome. Really awesome. Now, if you're used to working with temperatures, this is a sideball now. Now, and this is, normally we wouldn't necessarily take this action because for a rank beginner, these would be out of the question because of manipulation through temperature and humidity. But we've already established that you are adept at the very least and I'm not even gonna do you justice really because if you're working at a friggin aquarium looking after dart frogs as a profession you really should have your own channel making videos telling me how to do it so I'm not gonna teach you how to suck eggs but you are obviously very good at what you do which means that species that would traditionally be discounted because they're more difficult because of temperature parameters or humidity parameters suddenly become open to you. So if we're still sticking with the rat snakes, which of course I want to because they're amazing, we did a video the other day on Eupripiophis mandarinus, the mandarin rat snake. Holy moly. Colours wise, doesn't get much better. And in fact, they're probably challenging some of your dart frogs that are that pretty. If you get a really good one with loads of yellow uh, and reds, they are, they're, they're insane insane get about three and a half foot long really big chunky head nice muscular body but they're montane they're from china they're from vietnam um they do not like high temperatures absolute upper maximum of 26 degrees celsius and high humidity um you know you can put a loose substrate in in a rack box or, or a vivarium if you wanted to and just make sure it was a deep deep leaf litter and soil mix that they could burrow through um and they feed relatively readily as well so i don't think you should have any issues and the other one being oreo cryptophis porphyrisius coxi which is the thai bamboo rat snake again mentioned the other day in the video um, these are this again is temperature sensitive and enjoys slightly higher humidity but both the coxi and the mandarinus are relatively calm relatively tame um, and as captive bred animals as long as you respect their temperature parameters and humidity parameters shouldn't really pose you any problems given the experience you've got in keeping delicate species already i really don't see you struggling although everybody else who's watching who is a rank beginner please give due respect to the fact that victor keeps dart frogs traditionally viewed as some of the most difficult of all amphibians to keep alive professionally so that's why i'm bending the rules for him i do judge these things individually so i hope that was of use <coughs> we will cover question two and question three at a later date they're interesting questions in their own right so i can deal with them in isolation we will keep the questions coming we'll keep the videos coming all the best guys and see you soon